what's happening guys and welcome back to the channel and the champions of Europe are back in action tomorrow night when we take on Malmo at Stamford Bridge and this game is very important it's a must win in my opinion to get the Champions League campaign back on track uh, having lost uh, against Juventus last time out um, George Malmo are going to come to Stamford Bridge I mean no disrespect to them they probably are the group whipping boys they lost 3-0 to Juventus 4-0 to Zenit um, we really need to be getting a convincing win over them as well. They're going to come defend with a low block, men behind the ball. Um, we've seen Chelsea in the past struggle to break teams down that do this. Uh, we saw it on match day one against Zenit. We just got a 1-0 win. Um, are you expecting it to be a little bit easier this time? Should be, shouldn't it? I mean, I'd be very, very surprised if we don't pick up six points home and away against Malmo. Um, the, qu the quality of opposition is a different level. I mean, it, it, <laughs> We'd have to be incredibly unlucky or they'll have to defend incredibly well for 90 minutes to be able to get away with a point, I think, uh, at, at Stamford Bridge and, and obviously in, in Malmo as well. So I, I don't expect too much trouble. I, I think we'll, we'll get uh, more than a couple of goals in the game. I think you're right. I think particularly if we're going to qualify, we need to win those games. But also, you know, if we're wanting to still get top of the group, which is a possibility, you know, we've still got Juventus at home. Um, we need to be winning these matches. The, these are the, this is the team where it's pretty much a six pointer. So, yeah, it. I mean, is it's still Champions League football? You never know. But for me, I'm fairly comfortable that Chelsea are going to take all three points in this one. Yeah, I, I would think so. I mean, Thomas Tuchel did his press conference uh, this afternoon. Uh, he was asked about Romelu Lukaku's form, say, saying that he feels he's been overplayed. He's tired, which is why he's not perhaps playing so well. I agree with that. To a degree, I also think it's because he's not had enough service. I think real lack of creativity in the side at the moment, which is a little bit of a concern. Um, would you expect the likes of him, Mason Mountain, etc., to be rested for this game and maybe see players like Kai Havertz come in who haven't really featured as much recently? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we we keep harboring back to the squad, but we've we've got the squad to deal with it, haven't we? We've you know we're champions of Europe for a reason. I think one of those reasons was. The, the strength and depth and we've got that uh, other than City I'd say we're probably the best in Europe at that so I'd expect a lot of those players to be rested Lukaku one of them I think we can score enough goals without those players in the team and when you're replacing someone of Lukaku's quality with someone like Kai Havertz it's hardly a it's hardly a disappointment I mean Kai Havertz still a record signing at the club um, scored in the Champions League final more than capable of getting goals against Malmo as is Timo Werner I'd probably like to see Timo Werner maybe play up top for a change but um, remains to be seen how he's going to go with the lineup, but I, I don't know if Lukaku's. I mean, the, the difference the, the difference is we don't really have another option as in an out and out centre forward this year because we lost Tammy. I think that's probably one of the reasons why I would have thought we could have kept Tammy perhaps, but um, yeah, maybe Lukaku does need a rest, um, take him out, and yeah, go with it. Go with the team that's still more than capable of winning this game. I have to say, I think whoever plays uh, for us, as you mentioned, the squad's outstanding. We shouldn't be having any problems beating Malmo, regardless of who we, who we put out on, on, onto the pitch. Obviously, a big plus that Thiago Silva and Rudigo are back in training. Um, I'd probably expect one or if not both of those to feature in the back line. Um, do you think Reese James now, having come on against Brentford, this would be a good opportunity for him to get some a start under his belt and some more minutes uh in him as he gets back to full fitness. Would you expect him to kind of come in at a right wing back? And would you expect perhaps, would you expect Ben Chilwell to continue? Or do you think it's this is a game that Marcus Alonso could easily step in and play in? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see Marcus Alonso back personally. And I think Reese James the same. Um, it was a difficult game, difficult game against Brentford at the weekend. Um, took a lot of energy out of the players in the sense that we were digging deep for that last 20 minutes. And I think we need to freshen it up. We've touched on it, haven't we, about the age of the group, particularly at the back. So, but I mean, we, we show we're capable. I mean, when, when you know, Saar comes in, um, Chalaba comes in, no problem. So uh, I, I expect to see a lot of changes, actually, from the team. And I think this is a perfect game for Thomas Tuchel to give some players some minutes and to actually maybe work on an alternative tactic or players that he hasn't seen yet really be given a go. Because, again, let's be honest, it's going to be, it would be the shock of the tournament so far if Mauro were to get a win and even if they got a point I mean it would be remarkable for me yeah I mean we could even see the likes of the forgotten man sound against possibly I'm not sure I mean that might be a stretch too far but this that could be a good opportunity for him I'm not sure how he's been training 
Um, I would love to see Ruben off the sheet continue good form. Um, I would like you think this, this could be a game that Alonso could play in, but Ben Chill has got that momentum. And when you're playing well, you know, three goals in his last three games of common country, you just want to keep playing. You don't want to, you don't want to lose that momentum. So it'd be an interesting selection, selection there. Um, but George, last thing on formation, obviously we saw 3-5-2 deployed last time against Brentford. Um, Tuchel, when asked in a press conference about how to combat the low block, um, teams coming to the bridge and just defending, he said that the answer could possibly be a formation change, get more um, attacking players on the pitch. Um, that's not something I'm personally expecting from the off, but it could be something we may see if we get to half time at nil nil. There could be it could be a switch in the formation to get more attacking players on. Do you feel the three five two is going to be ditched for the more favourable three four three we've seen recently? Uh, perhaps I think he's probably given it away in his press conference that he's going to try something. And like you said, it's whether he goes from it from the off, which is quite dangerous in a way if you're playing an unfamiliar formation. Um, or like you said, probably the more realistic option is that we get to half time. If we're still struggling um, to break the low block, then you look to bring on more attacking players and, and take those risks a bit more. But again, I, I know it sounds a bit naive, but really in these sorts of games, I think almost tactics can be overlooked. I think it's a good opportunity to try things new, but really, I, I, you know, I think we could be playing with five players out there and still get a result against Malmo. I mean, <laughs> I, I think sometimes you, you, Sometimes they just, it doesn't need to be as complicated. I think just pick a side that are more than capable of winning the game of football. Um, obviously, he'll want he'll want his side to to still have that same energy, the same you know play the same way. He'll want the the tactics to shine through. He doesn't want people to just be you know take all the responsibility off and play a freestyle crazy style of football. But I, I do think in this particular game, it's we could play we could play awful and still not get out of second gear and still turn them over. So. Um, I would I would like to see him risk a bit more. That's what I'd like to see in this game because I don't think there's much risk of losing or or not winning this game. It'd be nice to see us put in like a kind of a ruthless performance, you know, beat them sort of yeah. three or four nil, like get a, get a quite a few goals on the board because we haven't scored a lot of goals this season in, in in games. As I mentioned, struggled for creativity. Just quickly, last thing to finish up, George. I know we've mentioned changes and stuff, but this whoever comes in, it's going to be big opportunities to stake a claim in the league and going forward for the likes of Kai Havertz, Callum hudson Adoy if they play. How important is it that, that those two players particularly seize their chance? Because Kai Havertz, you know, coming for big money, as we've said, Champions League final winning goal, that credit in the bank sort of running out for that. He needs to start performing on a more consistent basis and showing that the talent is there. Um, more regularly so how important could tomorrow night be for him uh massive and I think Thomas Tuchel's one of those managers and one of the very few in the in the kind of the top end of the table that isn't afraid to to change it I don't think a lot of people still know what Chelsea's necessarily best side is I, I still think it's up for debate particularly in the front three um yeah there are a lot of names that pick themselves but even you know we've mentioned the left back scenario um, but I think the, the, the biggest debate comes in that front three. And I think that's completely open to interpretation. So unlike someone like Oliver Solskjaer, who just picks the same players again and again and wants to make it work, I don't, I don't think Thomas Tuchel's afraid to say, look, in those moments, if they show enough quality in training or they have a good few games, they can do it. And, that, and the case in point is Loftus-Cheek, isn't it? You know, he's come in, he's worked hard, he's got himself a place and he's been rewarded with a couple of starts and, and playing well. So for Kai Havertz, it's a, it's a massive opportunity for him. And like I said, mate, I think I agree. I think we need to be ruthless and those players need to really take the game by the horns and, and go for it full, full pelt. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. I, I'd like to see us, you know, really put this team to the sword, you know, kind of lay down a bit of a marker, show that we mean business and, and that we can score a lot of goals. We asked just myself and George's thoughts on the Champions League tie against Malmo. It should be pretty straightforward, but you just never know in football. Um, as always, guys, smash a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're now 12 away from 100. So please subscribe, spread the word. We're almost there. Um, and yeah, we'll catch you in the next one.